Hi there, this is Jenny from Designs with Paper. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. I am going to attempt to create a light up card today. So get comfy and let's get crafty. A few years ago, the Chibitronics company put together these chibi light kits for card makers. And as I was cleaning and organizing this past week, I realized I had not yet used all of my supplies. My plan is to use this My Favorite Things candle dynamic to create a birthday card. I have already cut out and scored and folded my card base out of this pink card stock. I have also already cut out the card front, which is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I have a scrap piece of vellum here that I will be using as well. The Chibitronic set comes with this copper tape batteries and these little light bulbs and I will be using white light bulbs and the copper tape. My first step is to trim down my card front and I wanted something just a little bit extra because the card front itself doesn't have a lot going on. So I will be using this My Favorite Things Wonky Stitched Rectangles die. This die will take the card panel down to about four inches by five and a quarter inches, but it will also add that stitching around the outside edge. I am going to adhere the temporarily adhere the die in place with some washi tape that I have put across the back of my hand to kind of take away some of the stickiness of that. And I will run this through my Spellbinders Platinum die cut machine and carefully remove that washi tape because I do not want to tear the card panel. This is the front of my card. I don't want it to have any um, jacked up edges or torn pieces on it. So now that I have my card panel trimmed down and the stitching added, I am going to go ahead and figure out where to place the flame die. So in the pouch where I keep this die set, I already have a whole bunch of candles that I cut out of pattern paper for another project many moons ago and they perfectly coordinated with the cardstock that I chose. So all I need to cut is the flames. Since this is where I'm going to put my candles that are cut out of these cute little patterns of cards or pattern paper rather, I'm going to go ahead and tape the flame down right here at the top, like the top third. And I'm going to go ahead and tape that down as well because I don't want it to shift and slide around. I need it to stay in place. And then I will run that through my die cut machine as well. And when you pull that back out, it just kind of um, cuts those flames very neatly. <laughs> I it did kind of push that washi tape right down onto my, like kind of press it into the cardstock. So I did need to be gentle as I was picking that out or pulling that off rather. My goodness, words are a little bit difficult for me today. Um, it was spring break here last week, and so I took some time to clean and reorganize, and I'm having a hard time with the voiceover today. <laughs> All right, so now that my card panel has been die cut, I can go ahead with my pencil and mark where the flame cutouts are. And I'm just putting a dot kind of at the middle of the bottom of each of those flames, and after I had this all done, I was like, why did I use pencil? Because it literally gets, I mean, I used pencil so it wasn't visible when the card was finished, right? But it gets covered up. I totally could have used a pen so that you could see what I was doing. <laughs> I need to figure out where I want the battery. I cannot put it down at the bottom right there because I need to make sure I have room for foam tape. You have to use foam tape to prevent the battery from being on all the time or the lights from being on all the time. So I just drew a circle right at the bottom of that center candle. And now I'm kind of figuring out based on where I drew the dots for my flames, where my circuit needs to run. So you need to have two rows or two lines of the copper tape, the positive circuit and the negative circuit, because your battery has a positive end and a negative end. Because the flame cutouts on my candle are not straight across, they are kind of a zigzag pattern um, or a staggered pattern, I want to put my tape down in a zigzag pattern. So I am going ahead and drawing that zigzag line across or above and below the dots for my cutouts. I also need to create a little housing compartment for this battery. 
So I've taken a piece, just a scrap piece of white cardstock and folded it around that battery and I'm gluing it right there on the little dot I drew where my battery was going to be. The circuit has to come inside both parts of that battery housing to close the circuit and allow the lights to light up. Okay, I also need to make sure I leave enough space around the outside edges for foam tape. So I'm kind of cutting it close here, I think. <laughs> um, this is the copper um, tape. It is copper, it's really thin metal tape. It is about a quarter inch wide and I have decided to cut it in half because the pattern I need to create um, would take up a lot of space and I might run out of room for that foam tape at the end. So I'm going to go ahead and lay this down on that line I've drawn. I want to pull in my little light, my little triangle shaped light to make sure I know where the copper wire has to go. On these little triangle lights, there's a little copper piece at the top point and a copper piece at the base and they have to sit on top of this copper tape. So I am just making that zigzag shape. Anytime I need to change the direction of the tape, I'm just folding it back over on itself. I do remember that when this um, product first hit the crafting market, I remember reading that um, cutting it or tearing it was not optimal because it could create the circuit or could force the circuit to not complete. It could interrupt, there's a word, interrupt the circuit. So now I am going to go ahead and put the bottom line and you can see how close together these have to be to make sure that those light bulbs um, receive current on both ends, both the positive and negative end. I need to go all the way around the housing of this battery and up over the flap and inside the housing. And again, that is to make sure that the circuit can close around that battery and complete and have the light bulbs light up. This is like super ingenious. I don't know who thought of this. It totally was somebody way smarter in an electronic department than me, but it is so much fun. So now I am going to place my card panel on, on the front here just to make sure I know where my light bulbs need to be. And I am going to be adding five of these little triangle lights. And for the most part, they go on the peaks and the valleys of my zigzag pattern. The fifth one did kind of have to go on sideways in order to make sure that the, the top peak and the base both had contact with that copper tape. I am going to take my bone folder and add a little bit of pressure to make sure they are stuck down and really getting that current. And I will slide my battery in and push it down and the lights light up. Now here is where I tell you that I cut out 45 minutes of footage because I couldn't make it light up. And I redid the circuit three times and then realized my battery was upside down. I am well into my 40s. I should have known to check the battery. That's all I'm gonna say about that. <laughs> okay, I did not want the mechanism behind the card to be visible with the candle cutouts or the flame cutouts. So I have taken a piece of vellum and I am using an orange and a yellow Copic marker and I am scribbling on the back side of the vellum and just coloring it in. Um, when you color on vellum with Copic markers, the back looks kind of garbagey, but the front looks really smooth. Like it doesn't blend because it doesn't sit in, it doesn't soak into the vellum. It just kind of sits on the surface, so it doesn't blend really well. But on the front side, it looks really nice. So I realized that I probably didn't line it up quite perfectly, <laughs> but it was good enough. You could see the orange part of the flame and the yellow part of the flame when I added the adhesive and taped that vellum on. So that's all I needed. I just needed to have the appearance of flames. We're not really setting the card on fire here. We need the appearance of flames. And when I flip that over and put it back down on my card front, so now you get the light without seeing the mechanisms. I did notice that there was a little bit of the edge that needed some more yellow marker on it, which was easy enough to fix. My next step is to create a little bit of a wall around my battery housing. If I do not create a wall, the battery will fall out and then you'll push on an empty, you'll push on the push here button and nothing will happen because the battery has slid out of place. So I will put a double layer of foam tape all the way around 
the outside edge of my card panel and all the way around that battery housing. And I am just taking this long piece of foam tape, folding it in half on itself. And then for the sides, I am cutting it in half. There is not, it is quite a narrow area <laughs> and I don't want to um, have it showing. Once the copper tape is down, you can put adhesive over the top of it and it does not interfere with the circuit. So I'm not worried about covering up the copper tape with my foam tape walls. <clears throat> Excuse me. And again, this is a double layer of foam tape. I did end up off camera, gently peeling the top of the card off and adding a third layer of foam tape. And because I used white cardstock for the battery housing instead of like a piece of white copy paper. White copy paper is a little bit thinner and it's a little bit more, it's a little less stiff. So it's not going to stand like you can see how that white flap is up. And so it did make it so that the battery turned on easily. If I was going to mail this card, I for sure would not want the battery to be run down before the recipient got it in the mail. So yeah, off camera, I did add another layer of foam tape to the front of the card. And I, I'm trying to figure out how to get this on and lined up and voila, it looks perfect. And when you push down in the center there, the circuit closes and the lights turn on. It's like genius, man. So all I have left to do now, well, a few steps, but <laughs> my next step is to glue the candles to the front of my card. And for whatever reason, I was being exceptionally brave and putting the glue right over the front of my card. Every once in a while I do that. And then I watch myself when I'm editing the video and I'm like, why are you doing that? Do you not know what's going to happen? Yeah, I must have been just feeling extra brave because I had already conquered the electric circuit or, you know, upside down battery. <laughs> and I just was not obviously thinking clearly about the glue coming out on the top of my card. But crisis averted, nothing bad happened. We did get the batteries all on, or the candles rather, all on the card front. I did decide that this is a birthday card and it needs a little bit more bling. So I pulled out my Wink of Stella pen and added some Wink of Stella glitter to the vellum candle flames. And I just, I kept pushing on the battery because <laughs> I thought it was cool and because it was an accident. <laughs> and it did um, light up and sparkle like the Wink of Stella sparkled a little bit with the light bulbs behind it. So yeah, every birthday card needs a little bit of bling. And my next step is to go ahead and add a sentiment. I will be using this My Favorite Things birthday stamp set. And I have picked a piece of scrap paper off of my tray on my desk. And I will be stamping that it's your birthday sentiment stamp. I am going to put it in my Misty. And I will be stamping this stamp with the first fine Claire Nocturne Black Ink. I don't know what order those words are all supposed to go in. It is the Versa Fine Versa Claire Ink in Nocturne Black. There we go. It's a lot of words to say black ink. But I really like this black ink, especially for sentiments when you are trying to not put too much pressure because then it squishes the letters into weird shapes. I am going to go ahead and cut the tail end of this off and create a fishtail banner just for a little bit of added, you know, excitement. I don't know. Prettiness. I don't know. <laughs> and I am going to use my ATG gun to add some double-sided adhesive and adhere that right to the left-hand front part of the card. Then I need to stamp some instructions. So the, the person receiving this card needs to know that if they push on a certain place, something exciting will happen. I have pulled out this Lawn Fawn. I don't know if it's the push here or the push pull stamp set. And I will be using a little clear block and stamp the push here stamp right below the sentiment on that candle. I did get off the battery just a tiny bit on the edge. So I did need to take my Zig pen and fix a couple of the letters but no biggie. I also then decided that the wicks on these candles were just not, they weren't extra enough. 
<laughs> so I added, I went over the wicks on the candles with my zig pen and just, you know, made them a little bit more extra. I am going to go ahead and shut my studio lights off or my filming lights off so that you can see the, um, how bright it is. But first I want to add the liner to the inside of my card. And then this card is complete. And once I remembered how to do things, it really was quite fun to put together. And it really is pretty bright. So these are without my filming lights and just my overhead light on. And it was that bright. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you have a really fabulous day. Do me a favor, leave me a comment and give me a thumbs up. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. I have added a video here I think you will enjoy and a subscribe button. If you have not done so already, I would love it if you subscribe to my channel and please share this channel with anybody who you think might appreciate it. Have a great day.